Hello again, everyone. Happy New Year. We are back. This is the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight on Rome Business Radio. We are broadcasting from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. I'm Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. And I'm Thomas Kizel with the Rome Floyd Chamber. Happy New Year, Thomas. Happy New Year. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. We are off to a great start in a new year. Chamber's got new leadership. Uh, we've got we got a new chair, and we've got those guests in our studio. Would you mind introducing them, Thomas? Sure, absolutely. So today, uh, everything is all Chamber-related. Um, today, we have two guests with us, and um, actually, two of my bosses. <laughs> the boss and the boss's boss. Wait, so, you're, so your wife is here? <laughs> oh, I'm, I missed her. <laughs> two out of three. Yeah, we zoom her in. <laughs> okay, so we have the chairman of the board from the Rome Floyd Chamber, Kenneth Stock. She also is the CEO of Harbin Clinic. And then we have um, Pam Power Smith, and she's currently, um, or she is, uh, our new president and CEO of the Rome Floyd Chamber. Hello, ladies. Hello. Good morning. Good Round morning. of applause. <laughs> uh, well, let, let, Pam, let's start with you. You're the you're the new head honcho. <laughs> um, Jenny Krieger, big shoes to fill. Uh, so when did you get the news? Tell us about the process. This was late last year before the holidays, right? Um, that that she, she was leaving and, and you applied. You were already on staff. In what capacity were you on staff? Director of Business and Industry. Okay. And so just kind of take us through the process of how you uh, ended up in the chair. Sure. So I was interim most of October and some of November. And then thank, I'll always remember it as Thanksgiving when I was permanently uh, placed as president of the chamber. And your background, you moved to Rome a few years ago, as I recall, you from you used to run the Opelika Chamber in Opelika, Alabama, right? That's correct. I was president of the Opelika Chamber. So, and, and, but you're an Auburn fan. <laughs> Right, that's I've been the, waiting for this to come up today. <laughs> that, that's that's the thing I remember most is you're an Auburn fan because you're from the Opelika area originally. That's correct. But Rome yes. is home now. Correct. So I would imagine as an Auburn fan, you're you're rooting for the dogs against Alabama. I know y'all are so <laughs> excited. That's what I'm going to say about that. Oh, I just we, get, we, we got to get over the Alabama humps. Teach us how to do that. Y'all have done that from from time to time. But I digress. So uh, so. Kind of what is it, if you could give us 30 seconds here of uh, like your big picture vision of uh, of the chamber, you know, so much great work has been done there over the years and it's in new hands. So just tell us about your thoughts on, on things moving forward. Sure. I mean, I'll just hit a few things. I think one of the most important things to me is reaching out to our members and just making sure that we're providing the things that they need. So um, maybe we'll do some surveys in the spring, early spring, but we want to make sure we're meeting their needs, whether that's with programming networking, um, education. So I think we'll get a baseline here soon and just make sure that we are helping the businesses with the resources that they need. So it feed, that feedback is important to you and, and how yeah. you want to move move forward. Um, okay, so Kenna, so <laughs> you run the Harbin Clinic, but you told me before we started here that now you've kind of stepped into something that seemed a little far off when you committed to it, but here we are. <laughs> here we Long are. Time ago. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> uh, well, tell us what you were thinking. <laughs> well, um, it is a pleasure to serve alongside Pam and support her in carrying forward the um, strategies of the chamber. You know, we just got through a, a pretty major capital campaign, and I think Pam's got some big work to accomplish uh, bringing that alive and bringing that forward. So my role is to stay out of her way <laughs> and support her in, in all the ways that she needs. Now, you've been involved in the chamber for a while, though, you said. That's so, right. So you kind of know the, the inner workings and all that. So how do you think this role will be different? Time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> how many times I call her yeah. in a week. Um, <laughs> so when Thomas said something about um, his bosses, I think the role of the chamber is to be bossed by the uh, the president of the chamber. So um, I'll let you know. Um, maybe in about three or four weeks, I'll, <laughs> I'll report back. How, how long is your term? Uh, <clears throat> too long? <laughs> no, I'm really making out as though it's not an honor to serve in this way. Um, it's a year. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, uh, we're already into yeah, January. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're already talking about 2023. <laughs> yeah, it's going to fly by, it, just it will like will your fly. other time flew yeah, by. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so tell us about the capital campaign. 
First, I want to say I'm thankful that the capital campaign was completed before I took over as president. So there are a lot of thank yous that need to happen, especially to Jeannie Krieger, but then the folks that supported her as she did the camp campaign. So that happens every five years with this chamber. And so it was time last year for them to do that. And there are a lot of folks in this community that were very supportive, and we thank them too. Like I said, there's a lot of thanks to go around, but the folks that gave and donated – we appreciate that because it's going to allow us to do the work that we need to do. Yeah. So, so are there some specific areas where the dollars are targeted? So, um, I'm trying to think back to the PowerPoint, but one of the most important things, and Kenna can yeah, add. This is a podcast. We can't do PowerPoint. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm thinking in my brain. Hey, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's my own visual <laughs> in my own brain. Um, one of the most important things that came up during the capital campaign was workforce, and that goes for small business all the way up to manufacturing as folks cannot find workers. And so we've already hired a workforce director at the chamber, and so that was one of the main things that came up as they were raising the funds. And there were probably some secondary major topics that came up for folks but workforce really is our topic every day at the chamber what do you have you brought with you i guess from your experience in opa like uh, maybe some things we weren't doing or could we do do differently things like anything or is it is it more about listening to what's going on in this community um i still have a lot of learning to do which i think is why the listening is going to be um, crucial for me. But, I mean, I think every community has the same issues, the pros and the cons that are going on. But like I said, I definitely want to see get a pul- get our, my finger on the pulse of where we are so then we can help the best we can. Yeah, well, and the pandemic has affected everybody everywhere. But I, you guys, you know, on social media, still doing the ribbon cuttings. Thomas, uh, uh, Thomas is always busy. Um, so can you, can you kind of talk about what, what we expect maybe 2022 to be differently, to be different from 2021? Do we, if, if the world gets back to normal, are we more ribbon cuttings, things like that? I know we had to, we had to postpone the expo because of the latest, what's the, oh my, what's, what's the latest variant? Um, <laughs> Omicron. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's ask the Hartman Clinic person. What, Omicron. Omicron. <laughs> uh, and really it's. To, to protect people and yeah. keep everybody safe and keep us from spreading it around and making it worse than it needs to be. Yeah. So w- when do we think we might reschedule that? Do we know? November 3rd. Okay. November 3rd. Fingers crossed that this thing doesn't linger. Uh, asking, asking the Harbin Clinic person, is this thing ever going away? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on the record. Asking the, <laughs> I wish we all knew. And right. We had all hoped in the beginning that we would get past it and it would be behind us and something we just talked about. Uh, for years to come, but it looks like it may just stay with us. Right. Um, some, some form or fashion. Like, kind of like the flu. We might just get used to it every year, hopefully, and it'll be mild. And But fingers crossed. So um, 2022, uh, off to the new year, uh, fresh start. Uh, anything kind of coming up on the horizon immediately since we've had to move the expo? What's, what's going on, Thomas? You're looking at your list there? I'm just looking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. My head's spinning. Um, uh, lots of things happening. Uh, we have a uh, currently we are working on a trip to DC uh, with some community leaders. So that's that's coming up, and then we have our uh, innovation symposium, the Confluence, uh, is happening uh, March 24th, and then you know uh, we just keep working. Um, you know, for our members, and uh, uh, you know. We are here to promote prosperity for the county, you know, regardless of uh, pandemics or sickness or illness. We want everybody to prosper and uh, we want to promote that prosperity uh, out to the community. And that's that's our main focus. Yeah, Pam, it's interesting that you were you worked at the chamber, but you probably still don't know everybody in town yet, but you met a bunch of people. So you're kind of in a... You're in that area where you know some, but not all, but you're not brand new. So can you can you touch on that a little bit, how, you, how the personal growth has been as you build relationships in town? Yeah, thank you for picking up on that because it does – I want to meet as many people as I can. So it's exactly as you just said. I've met some people, but some people I haven't, and we now have – over a thousand members. So it's difficult to know everyone, um, especially other community leaders. But um, I've never been in that situation before. So there are some days where I focus on that. So I make a list. Okay, these are the folks I need to reach out to proactively on my own. But now that I'm on this podcast, I would like to invite everyone, if I have not met you, please visit me because I would love to meet you. Uh, You met Kenna. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <I do>. <laughs> <laughs> you have her phone number I do. <laughs> she certainly does <laughs> <laughs> well kenneth's interesting um 
your background is business. You've been at the Harbin Clinic for 20 plus years, uh, but you're not a physician. That's correct. So, but you come out of a business background, which ties in great with the work at the chamber, I guess. Um, so just tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my background is, as you said, I actually spent a good deal of my time before I came to Rome, Georgia. I was in St. Louis or St. Louis area in healthcare as well. Um, always on the business side, but like we talked about before this podcast got started. <laughs> when you were feeling comfortable and relaxed. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> when, uh, now you, now you got headphones were, on. Yeah, and that's <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, the business of medicine certainly is important to keep the lights on and the doors open, but it is not what we do. It's the practice of medicine. It's caring for people and ensuring their health and well-being. That's the mission of the Harbin Clinic. And our role in the, on the business side is to support that. And you're celebrating an anniversary this year, I we think, Harvard. We are. 150 years. 150 years. That's pretty phenomenal. I don't know, I don't know that I um, have ever been um, a part of a company that's had that kind of legacy, that kind of history. Um, it's been said many times and was said actually to some visitors at the Harbin Clinic yesterday that we are fortunate to stand on the shoulders of giants um, and are fortunate to have um, 150 or so physicians that work in our organization and about another 125 um, advanced practice clinicians. So a lot of people taking care of a lot of people in our community. And and this runs the gamut of specialties. It does. Like from what to what? <laughs> well, from primary care right. um, to almost all of the medical sub, uh, specialties that you would think of in a complex organization. So from cardiology to neurosurgery and all the pieces and parts in between. We do a lot of advanced health care here in Rome, Georgia. It was really one of the most um, interesting aspects of Rome when I first visited here. To see a community this size with this level of health care is just really unheard of. It really makes this community quite special, um, and I'm fortunate to be a part of that. But really, our hospitals – take care of um, most anything that anybody would need in healthcare in our, in our community, except for transplants. Um, but other than that, we take care of almost anything that could go wrong with you. And we don't <laughs> want things to go wrong with you. We really want people to be well. And so a lot of our focus too is on health and well-being. So was it the job that brought you to Rome? It was. Uh, and from Missouri originally? I was. Okay. And you, so you obviously love it here. I do love it here. It's been a wonderful community. Yeah. It's hard not to love it here, isn't it? It is. Great little town. And and uh, um, you came from somewhere else too, so you obviously love it here. Yeah. You know. <laughs> what's, Rome gets it, what's Rome gets its hooks in you? <laughs> Thomas is from somewhere else. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't tell by the way y'all talk. I can tell by the way he talks. He ain't from around here. <laughs> East Cartersville. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You uh, you were saying, Pam, before. Oh, moving here during the pandemic was difficult. You know, we moved here in spring of 2020. So it took a minute before I got acclimated to normal Rome and seeing people and meeting people in person. So I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, give me a state of the state of the union, if you will, of the chamber. We, we last year of membership drive went over a thousand members. But what's the staff situation? How many employees do you have? And and what are some other businesses in addition to Ken and the Harbin Clinic that are on your board and help you out? You know, let's let's uh, just give, kind of give me a overall state of the state of the union. Sure. So there's five of us right now. Okay. Is that correct? One, two, three. <laughs> um, we are currently about to start our um, meetings with folks to hire for our program director position. This is the important position that runs our leadership programs. And so a lot of folks are familiar with that. It runs our leadership programs, our diversity program, and our nonprofit program. So it's a busy position, but we're getting ready to do all those interviews in the next month or so. So we need that added as soon as possible. And then, um, so there's, yeah, that would make six at that point. And um, other businesses, so we have a ton of new people on the board, I would like to say, so we appreciate them agreeing to serve. And um, we'll do some exercises to acclimate them to what we do. But our other businesses, our incoming chair after Kenna will be JJ 
uh, Johnson from Smoothie King. Right, but he's been on the show before. Love, love JJ yes. and Smoothie King. <laughs> yes, love them both. Um, some other businesses that will be joining the board this year will be Bill Temple um, with the Realty Company. We have Heath Hooper with Shorter University. Um, we have a diverse board because we want all of our sectors represented. So let me... Um, mention that you know we have education, we have healthcare, we have small business, manufacturing, nonprofit. So we want to make sure all of our membership is represented. Smart, um, yeah. So it's try to be equal. Uh, tell this program director position that's open. If somebody's listening and they want to apply, what should they do? And what are can you can you kind of give some more specifics on the leadership program and things like that that they would be involved in? Yeah, so it's too late to apply. So we we had that open. <laughs> to hear <care of> that, <laughs> <laughs> we've been um, gathering those resumes for quite a while. But we'll start those meetings next week to select our new person. And then, like I said, our leadership programs are very important, and leadership is near and dear to my heart personally. That is an exciting opportunity for citizens in Rome to be part of a class where they not only learn about the community, but they build relationships with the other twenty five people in the class, and so. I think that's crucial to building leaders for the community, and I think it's crucial in building relationships, too. Okay, Thomas, what is your title? We've talked about this before, and I still don't understand it. <laughs> okay, you ready? I am. <laughs> it takes a while. Uh, I'm the director of membership and entrepreneurial development. Okay, the membership part I get, we had a great membership drive, which probably wore you out and everybody on the staff last year. Entrepreneurial development. Talk to me. Um, basically, you know, new businesses that are in town or, you know, people with entrepreneurial visions, dreams, uh, you know, especially, you know, kids coming out of uh, college or even high school level, you know, if you have that certain idea, you know, I want to be the contact person to them, you know, and encourage them to, you know, keep dreaming and keep working on it and uh, keep that talent here in, in, in town, of course. See, that's a great answer. Now I completely understand. <laughs> we'll test you on that. <laughs> it, it, it seems like I, I, you know, following you guys on social media and the newspaper, the podcasting, and all that, knowing all that you have going on, it seems like y'all have far more people than you actually have. <laughs> so, yes. is everybody working like a hundred hours a week? And I know you probably would love to have more people, but there's there's always budgets and things like that. So, how do you get all that you get done with the numbers that you have? We just work hard. I think we're there. Um, we are there a lot, but everyone is great about pitching in and doing anything that needs to be done. So it's a hard working group, but we have fun for sure. And then we have help from our members. And it came to mind as Thomas was talking about his job of young business owners. One of our great partners is the um, small business development Um I'm sorry, small business from UG UGA, small <laughs> business. And they – pitch in, teach our classes, take phone calls from all these people. So because we are masters at finding resources for people, Small Business Development Center, sorry. Um, because we are masters at finding resources, we find them for ourselves too. So when someone calls to ask a question, we give them the contacts they need and not to get rid of them, but to assist them. Okay. So the ultimate, for some, somebody listening that's running a business in town that did not get in the membership drive, what are the benefits? They meet other businesses, they network, they meet other community. But just tell me, get rid of the list of benefits if somebody wants to join the chamber for their business. Yeah, Thomas is actually great at this speech. And all of us in the office are always afraid to try to give this speech to someone when they come in. So I'm going to let him talk about some of the benefits. So I happen to have my sheet sheet here with me. <laughs> His version so, of a PowerPoint. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I was going to so, say, I, 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 let's, staying with the football analogy, which I often do, you're a head football coach and I'm a great high school player, recruit me. Yeah, right. there you go. <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, one big part, and that's actually something new and innovative, uh, speaking of innovation and, uh, you know, being, being new and on, on the front line of, of new uh, innovative things is, you know, this podcast uh, we are attending here right now. Um, so uh, th this is something everybody, all of our members can attend or be a part of, you know, and uh, increase their reach with their social media networks. And, you know, with you mentioned the, the newspapers has a, has a reach of 50,000 uh uh, readers um, online so uh, that's one of the benefits of course uh, you know the classic the ribbon cutting you know and it's not just for new businesses you can utilize your, your ribbon cutting for an anniversary you know for a, a, a remodel of your your, your, your business location oh, that's interesting see a lot of people might not have known that that's exactly. interesting you, yeah. you can be in town for you know um, 
Harbin Clinic is in town for how many years? 120? 150. Uh, 50, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's a milestone. So celebrate those milestones there as well. So uh, we had somebody celebrating 20 years, years uh, just recently. That was Median Roofing. I think those folks were here last year. Yep. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's the classic. And, of course, you know, we have, um, Pam already mentioned the collaboration with the uh, Small Business Development Center. And then we have the uh, Chamber Committees. Committees always sounds a little, uh, you know, formal and sounds like a lot of work, but, you know, it's, it's a special interest group, you know, and it's networking opportunity. And that's what, what the chamber is all about. It's about, you know, finding resources, connecting people and, uh, you know, try to um, prosper, like I mentioned earlier. So, right. So um, how does the board help? So can I specifically text my phone calls and doesn't <laughs> ignore them? So that's really great. Um, well, yeah, what do you need from Kenna? Be honest. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, do I have a piece of paper that I can uh, list all that? But for me personally, um, and this is my viewpoint on the board and that is they, they're a resource for us. So they will assist if we have questions or if I need to meet someone specifically. And just kind of that big picture thinking for us. So because we're busy all the time, we're in the weeds doing the work all the time, but we need the assistance of the board to kind of look down and say, not in a bad way, but look down and say, okay, we need to be doing this or y'all are doing great at this, but let's focus over here just to make sure we are hitting all the things we need to be doing um, in the community and for our businesses for sure. And just to kind of have a conversation with them all the time. Again, we are in our building and we are just working. So it's really great to have conversations with folks like that. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's possible. You guys always have to be looking forward, but mm -hmm. there's so much going on day to day that you don't want to let that expo get away from you, you know, sneak up or what, you know, this, this next big event. So I guess that's a time management thing, which is a business skill. Um, so can I, any, any thing from your point of view that might be, I guess, a different viewpoint that you bring now, you've, you've served on the board, but now in, you know, being, what's the, what's the term chair, um, you know, does that change your viewpoint at all about what you, what influence you might want to have with the chamber or what input you want to offer or um, what are your thoughts on the new role? Well, again, I think that the chair's role is, um, is really to facilitate those board meetings more than anything else in particular. Um, Pam may say otherwise, and I've yet to learn maybe what my role and responsibility is. So again, maybe ask me and 30 days. But um, I think the board's role, like Pam said, is really not to deal with the day-to-day -day operations as much as helping establish strategy um, and what a go-forward looks like. And I think when you think about a business, what is the value proposition of a business being a, a member of the chamber? Our health, um, well, I think the health and the well-being of our business community um, is we're all interconnected. We depend on each other. And the more we have a perspective that is a more global perspective of our community, the more we can contribute to that health and well-being of our community. So I think that's probably, when I think about our membership, our most valuable aspect of the membership is those is that ability to make a contribution to the health and the well-being of the of, of this community from a business perspective. Well, see, now we were joking before the show. If somebody might say something profound, you just said something profound. <laughs> I'm not quite sure you can credit that. You should ring a bell or something. <laughs> that may be the first and the last thing of the year that I say that's profound, but thank you. Well, so um, we were over a thousand members and, and I guess that's, we, we think about that because it's a, 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 you know, a good flat number. One of those, one of those numbers. But is is there an ultimate goal? Um, because there there are probably some members who aren't getting out of it what they could be getting out of it. So, you know, we need to encourage those people to you know be more involved um, so that they can maximize the benefits that the chamber offers. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. So, what would you do to encourage those people who are members who maybe kind of drifted for a year or two, but? You know, since there's new life and new energy and so much going on, what would you say to encourage those people to get back involved? 
Yeah, I'm going to let Thomas answer this in just a minute, but you hit on something that's very important, which is retention is a major issue for us. And so Thomas has lots of hard work to do, but um, he does well at that. And he's also very good at explaining those benefits to people because when we don't see them for a while, you know, Thomas is kind of like, wait, why are you not taking advantage of this? You've missed this. You haven't come to anything, you know, that sort of thing. But Thomas can speak a little bit more to maximizing benefits, but really, and we know it's difficult for businesses. I think we all are very understanding of when you own a small business, you're busy. And so do you have the time to take advantage of those? But we definitely think they're so important for you to take advantage of. But yeah, Thomas can talk more. Yeah, about well, that. even even the example you cited earlier that a ribbon cutting is not just for a brand new business that's opening. It can be used to celebrate an anniversary or something. But yeah, to, if you could expand upon retention there, Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, first of all, uh, Georgia, we just learned that uh, recently, we have over 1.6 million small businesses just that's in the state of Georgia. So that, you know, we have 159 counties that, you know, goes down to 1,600, I guess, businesses per county. We have a business list of over 2,000. So there is still lots of room to grow, especially, you know, uh, reaching out to minority groups. So uh, that's why uh, we all at the chamber are very thankful to have um, Mary um, uh, on board, uh, our, you know, office manager. She is bilingual in Spanish. And, you know, since she's on board, you know, we, we could increase our membership, you know, in the Spanish Hispanic market uh dramatically because you know um the dynamics and, and inner works of of that community is totally different than you know the majority of small businesses in rome and you know there are other small mi- minority groups that uh you know we want to include um in the future and um there's lots of uh, room to grow and also you know uh retention uh we you know, want to listen to everybody's uh concerns and ideas and you know the board can help us uh the board those are our superstars, member superstars, because, you know, you wouldn't be there if you w- would not be a member of the chamber to begin with. So, uh, you know, we want to... Uh, yeah, so Harbin's a member of the chamber, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I'm not sure exactly what he just said. I'm not sure that the chamber was around 150 years ago. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Tom. I think some smart people listen to uh, back, have, back, back to the advice. pictures of that ribbon right. cutting? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, we want to, you know, just create that, that healthy environment and, you know, keep our community, uh, um, you know, healthy. And this, this is the year of, of health. And, you know, uh, in, in so many as- aspects, um, and I'm, you know, not, not kidding here at all. And, um, you know, and we want to grow from there. Well, the one thing that I would add to it is I think that with any organization, whatever that organization is, Pam spoke to it earlier, is doing a pulse check of what people think and feel and what they see as the value proposition. We can sit here all day long and talk about the many things that Tom Thomas outlines on what is the value proposition. But as we all know, service and really cust- satisfying your customer is from their perspective. What does the chamber mean to some of those 1,000 ind- businesses and the other 1,000 that are not part of it? How do we, you know, it's hard to satisfy everybody and to have a product that everybody would say there's a value proposition in that for me, but especially for small business, big business as well. When you're spending money, you're making a decision about that spend and the chamber needs to make sure that, that there's a true value proposition for everyone that contributes their membership dollars towards the chamber. Well, and part of that value proposition would be Every business, small or large, wants to grow its business. Absolutely. And you grow your business through relationships, and the chamber would seem like the best place to do that. It's a good place to do that. Yeah. Um, Very profound. (laughs) See, we're all being profound this morning. (laughs) I'm not. Um, Okay, what's some contact information for people to learn more, get ahead, you know, uh, email addresses, social media, websites, uh, all that stuff. Thomas, do you want to go first? Sure, absolutely. So um, our location is one Riverside Parkway, uh, just down the street. Um, we like to mention, you know, eateries uh, right across the, <laughs> the street from uh, Ducks yeah. Deli. Okay, that's, that's it. Every time we ask somebody where they're located on the show, 
Everybody That's makes reference to, to my. We're we're sp- next to this restaurant. <laughs> we like Smart. to eat in Rome, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, yes, Smart. yes, we do. Anyway, go ahead, Thomas. I'm sorry. Yes, our our office hours are eight thirty uh, to five o'clock uh, Monday through Friday. So just stop by, and there's somebody will be there uh, all the time, and uh, we are happy to to answer your question. And, and our you, building is beautiful. Yes. I'm not. I'm just going to brag on it. Do you have a, <laughs> you have a great big fancy office now? No, I stayed in my office. <laughs> Oh, did you? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. You'll have a great big fancy conference room. I love your yes, conference room. It's beautiful. Um, right. yeah. And it's large. And, yeah. you know, we can spread out, especially right now. But we still want to see you uh, live and in person. And we have even a beautiful patio, which we utilized for our Rome International Film Festival just recently. So um, we can spread out. Uh, we want to meet you in person. But, you know, of, of course, we learned over the past few years, we can, you know, meet you via Zoom. We can uh, answer you uh, with an email. We, uh, you know, just... just just go, just Google Rome Floyd Chamber and, and you know, you'll find uh, all the necessary information and, you know, we'll, we'll communicate uh, however you would like it. We, I think our fax machine is still working too. <laughs> We've had a lot of discussion about that fax machine. <laughs> Not sure why we have one, well, but what, okay. What, 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 I'm sorry, what is a fax machine? <laughs> I, I, I'm just, uh, you want to give out emails? Uh, or just romega.com yeah. is the best way just the website romega.com and of course you guys are all over social um kenna you want to praise the harbin clinic here get some contact information your website things like that well our website is um pretty simple it's fine harbinclinic.com and I, I i hope you'll find anything and everything that you need to keep yourself healthy and well uh well ladies and thomas um Good luck. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. (laughs) Yes, congratulations. Absolutely. I am honored. (laughs) Truly, I am. Congratulations with an exclamation point to you. Congratulations with a question mark. (laughs) Time will tell. (laughs) No, uh, everybody, I'm sure you'll do a great job. Chamber's in great hands. Uh, So thank you so much for participating. We do appreciate it. You've been listening to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. We broadcast from the Hardy Realty Studio, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. Thank you for listening.